Happy second to last week of February, everybody, from News Channel 3 in downtown Memphis, Tennessee. I'm meteorologist Austin Onig with a look at your environment blog for the last second to last week of February. This is a blog post to give you an idea as to what's going on around the Mid-South area, either locally or worldwide. A lot of what may be happening to help you get involved with environmental efforts and understand how important it is that we need to get involved in things like recycling and conserving our natural resources. Believe it or not, this program actually started back in about 1990 in Topeka, Kansas, and I've carried it forward since the days of Channel 49 in Topeka, Kansas as a Friday night segment that we used to have featuring about recycling and environmental efforts and all kinds of stuff like that. So we've kept it going, put it on the web, and this is an opportunity for you to learn a little bit more about what's going on into and around the Mid-South area and beyond. We're going to be talking about a lot of things for tonight, all available again at WRE g.com slash weather slash environment we'll talk a little bit more about invasive plants in the mid-south area not just kudzu but a lot of other things out there we'll talk about how you can do a good job of making certain that your recycled stuff gets recycled instead of just getting thrown out plus a big effort to not just collect and get rid of but to harpoon space junk and to make certain it's not a threat we've got an ever-increasing problem around the planet when it comes to artificial stuff that's up there right now it's going to get more and more dangerous for space travelers out there and that's to say nothing about the natural stuff that's floating around in the solar system already we'll talk more about that coming up here in just a little bit so again stay tuned for more on that let's go ahead and get going and talk a little bit more about what's happening out there quick view from above our planet on Sunday evening when we record this of uh, the International Space Station's cameras. You can view that on Ustream if you go to nasa.gov slash TV and you can log in on Ustream or on NASA Live. Good opportunity to see a little bit more about what your planet looks like from about 200 miles up. Absolutely beautiful, a little hazy, but again, a gorgeous view of what's going on from above our planet, give you more of a wide scale planetary view of everything happening. We'll talk about Earth Hour coming up in just a little bit. Your opportunity to learn more about conservation of power and what it takes to produce that power. So stick around for more on that in just a little bit. Air quality in the Mid-South thanks to the rainfall and the northwesterly winds coming on through. Thanks to the EPA's Air Now system. Looking again at very good conditions out there with green across the board, a measurement of 31 degrees on the air quality index, which you can see again right back over here in the right hand side of the screen and forecast for tomorrow a little bit higher but not doing too bad, about 49, as also, again, seeing some decently clear conditions out there. Now, air quality is important, especially as we're stuck indoors a lot more these days. You've probably heard about radon gas. It's a naturally occurring gas, but parts of the cities and the towns that we live in can get a lot more than usual, and it can build up, and it can cause problems, but is it really a danger to you? Well, Tennessee Department of Environment and Conservation has free test kits available, which you can send for and test your home and see if you're getting too much radon. And again, something to take a look at, nothing to panic over, but definitely something to take a look at along with making certain that you have a good fire prevention kit, including a fire alarm. This might not be a bad idea to get that taken care of there. And also tons of citizen science projects available in tune around the Mid-South, the state of Tennessee, and beyond. How do you get there? Well, you got tons of information available from their website at tn.gov if you'd like to find out more about what they do to protect our air, our water, and our land, and more importantly about how you can get involved in things like this. You can also access information from them on Facebook at facebook.com slash TN environment and they are also on Twitter at twitter.com slash TN environment as well. See somebody littering across the Mid-South. Memphis City Beautiful has a nice anonymous website to find out more details about how you can tell on the people who you caught littering by calling 52 clean. That's 522-5326. It's a 24-hour phone line if you'd like to report things like that going on. Phone reports, again, should include the license number, vehicle type, date, time, and location, as well as a description of the violations uh, witnessed on this. The offenders will receive an official warning letter detailing the criminal penalties associated with littering, along with a brochure about the problem of litter and how they can improve things by recycling and cleaning up after themselves. So a pretty neat idea to take a look 
at what you can do to remind people to keep the junk in the car and properly dispose of it. In Overton Park, a problem with English ivy. It was imported many years ago, and like kudzu, it was supposed to be a nice little filler. It was a groundscaping plant that unfortunately went hog wild and is now choking out parts of the Mid-South area, including parts of Overton Park. So they're trying to get rid of it. What are they doing and how are they doing it? It does involve some area of uh, plant uh, killers out there to help to cleanse the area of it. It's not going to harm the park or the soil or the land around it or the water, but there are some things going on that you can get involved in and find out more about what's happening. Harpoons are now being used, at least in a test process, above our planet from the BBC looking at space harpoons skewering orbital debris. The test pad is, again, on the left-hand side here, and as you take a look at this going into motion, we see again the space junk hitting the target and reeling it in. This works for very large pieces of trash out there, but there's still tons of things like paint flex and all kinds of other stuff from screws and cameras and all sorts of things of that nature that need to be cleaned up out there. How big is the problem? Well, unfortunately, this is a map of what it looks like with just the orbital debris that we put up there, including the satellites, paint chips, leftover tools and equipment and all kinds of stuff like that, thousands of things up there, which is going to make it very dangerous for space travelers. Now, that's just the stuff that we put up there. If you take a look at all the natural stuff, the blue line that you see in the middle is, again, the Earth orbit. Anything red is an Earth crossing and possible danger to us asteroid. Green is just the asteroids out mainly toward the asteroid belt, and yellow to orange is kind of the lesser threat but still a possibility threat depending on what goes on in the future. And this is what is flinging around our solar system all the time. So this is something we have to worry about and a good reason why we need a good strong space agency to take a look at what goes on out there. More from the Cooper Young area. The recycling bins are full and they're getting recycled at some point in time, but if you set stuff up out into that area, they could be trash and Clean Memphis doesn't want that to happen. So they have listed several alternate recycling center drop-off points, including Mud Island, Southeast Memphis, Downtown, East Memphis, and around the Reed community area of Ferris View Boulevard. So definitely something to consider there to make certain that your recycled stuff actually gets recycled. Wolf River Conservancy got tons of stuff going on, including the celebration for Arbor Day coming up on March the 1st. Going to be looking at cleanup and also, again, celebrations of World Water Day coming up a little bit later in March. And the harbor cleanup for Wolf River will be taking place Saturday, March 23rd. You can find out more from the Wolf River Conservancy by going to wolfriver.org for more. Chickasaw Group has a lot of events going on. In the next several days, the Chickasaw Group of the Sierra Club has more happening, including Conservation Education Day training, helping you understand what it takes to talk to legislators about things like ecology and conservation and the environment. If you'd like to take the training, more information is available, again, from the Sierra Club Chickasaw Group at sierraclub.org slash Tennessee slash Chickasaw. Also, plenty of events for young naturalists at the Lichterman Nature Center. You can find out more by going to memphismuseums.org. Earth Hour is coming up in 40 days. We'll talk a little bit more about that coming up in just a little bit. And, of course, your ability to clean up things, helping the rainforest stay healthy. The rainforestsite.com is a good place to go to for more information on that. All you have to do is click a green button, view some ads, and the sponsors will pay to clean up the and preserve the rainforest site, keeping the lungs of our planet clean and healthy. So far this year, two and a half million clicks have saved 1,200 acres. Now, that sounds like a good opportunity for us to stay clean and healthy, but unfortunately, a lot of damage is being done to the rainforest, and we need to make certain that we set aside and keep it healthy by not slashing and burning it for farmland down there. 40 days until Earth Hour, your opportunity to turn off the lights and find out more about saving 
energy and finding out more about how much energy you use. That will be coming up here in the next several days. We'll keep you updated on that. Questions, concerns, ideas, something going on locally that you'd like to get on here, please let me know about it. Again, you can send the email to me at austin.onic at wreg.com for much more on that. That will do it for this edition of News Channel 3's exclusive environmental blog, Your Environment. We'll have more coming up next week, so stay tuned for more at wreg.com slash weather.